And we have liftoff here with Nim getting white in the first game against Big Papa Plata over here. Is that the Scandinavian? No. Uh, Scandinavian is, he... is uh, the pawn push in front of the king. So it's uh, pretty close, but because the pawn is pushed in front of the queen and then you mirror it, it's, it's a different opening. I see, I see, I see. Oh, my gosh. So who prepared Papa Plata for this move E5 here? Uh, I'm guessing one of the German, I, I don't know which, I think he took a couple of lessons with a German international master. So perhaps that's how he came up with this opening. Yeah, well, they Ludwig, moved, that's they when you really call fast. it. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of sham sacrifice because this pawn on E5 can be captured, but that initiates a queen trade and white loses the right to castle. I'll tell you right now, he's not going to do that. He's going to move his knight to F3, 100%. I'm feeling it. Okay, so knight F3. What, what, do you, what stakes are you putting on that move? I would put 20 gifted... Oh, I was so close. <laughs> close. I was so close. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Gotta count it. I thought that was even dumber. <laughs> I, I was thinking knight to F3. Look, I know Nim, and I know he sticks to his principles, and one of the principles is control the center, and so I always feel like an asshole when I have two pawns on the E file, then my D file is wide open, so I want to avoid it. I don't know how to get around it, though, so I probably would put my knight there. He probably went through the process. If I put the knight there, then he'll move up one spot with his pawn, so he ended up just moving the knight anyway. Uh, but we are functioning on similar wavelengths right now, me and Nim. Yeah, well, this knight on e2 blocks the bishop off from the attack on the c4 pawn. So whether it's the same wavelength or not, you're kind of lucky you didn't finish your sentence there with the 20. <laughs> and d5 is a good move, but let's listen in on Nim because we'll pull him up and hear his thoughts. Uh, this this knight move was so weird, but I, I honestly I don't remember what the f I do when they send out his pawn. I didn't want to go here with my. Okay. I need I need to get this guy out of the way. This guy's f***ing me though. I'm gonna go here actually. This seems good. Takes takes can't take. Could have also moved this pawn up. Might not be too bad. I really pretty, pretty good so pawn. far from from Nim though. He's looking very very comfortable in this opening, even if he doesn't have a clue what he's doing. Yeah, this is how I feel every time UGMs tell this me this guy just plays in the weirdest way, man. Alternatives. Okay, let me see. To watch out for. <laughs> Could go he didn't understand now. his. Th he's like, I didn't yeah, like my position, and his knight blocking his bishop, so he so did he move his knight out. Take now. So I go he's got a good center now. Now, almost definitely, my next move is going to be this. What can he do? Something like this? I go here, then? Uh... I want to actually send this guy taste. up here. Mm -hmm. No. I really want to take this. Like, Ludwig, how come... People aren't like you just screaming at the board all the time. You need because to teach them. I, I, look, they're a little nervous. I got to say, uh, one of the most nervous I've ever been was going up against Choco Bars. Because when you're the favorite, everybody in chat, if you fail, will Omega lol. But if you're not the favorite, if you're the underdog, then it's just a Sag. All right? And it's okay to farm Sages. You feel good about having chat Sag for you. You don't feel good when everyone Omega lols because you're missing some dumbass move that nobody's supposed to see because it's like you, you move your pawn here and then you move your bishop out of the way. And so, look, he's going to he's, – he's the big favorite here, right? He has like a 300-point, 250-point <laughs> bonus over, over pawn. So, if he doesn't win, it's going to be a rough time when he goes back live. Okay. Of course, he's been awfully quiet. Uh, yeah, that's well. He mm -hmm. he did play pretty well yesterday. He did not get the match, but you're right. It's it's true. You you should let your moves do the talking, unless you're Ludwig, in which case you just keep on talking while making good moves, right? <laughs> it's uh, I don't know if you ever heard like, but when you're really scared, you talk a lot to comfort yourself. Like uh, like in scary movies or like in scary situations, you'll talk to yourself. I do the same thing, but I just I mask it with confidence. <laughs> Carlo, <laughs> I see you trying so hard not to laugh. Yeah, well, it's it's true. It's it's true though. Yeah, just just trying to talk to yourself and make yourself feel better because you don't really know what's going on in the game. So just hoping, I think, every move that you don't make a mistake and lose the game. 
But somehow this position has turned out pretty well for Nim, all things considered. He was able to castle. He has all, many of his pieces in the center here. And for Pablo Plata, he can't castle because his knight's now in the way of his bishop. I have a bad feeling about this. I do not feel good <laughs> for Pablo Plata here. Good, good astute observation. Look, if I'm Papa Plata, I'm thinking, God damn, I have not castled yet, and it is almost turn 10, and he just did castle. So I think he's going to try to find a way to do it. I would grip and rip it, even though it's crazy, queen side, because all I have to do is move one bishop. I like it. I mm -hmm. mean, the problem would be is once – well, white does have many pieces on the queen side. So if you do castle a queen side, eventually I'll try to get a rook on c1 and go for your king. But – you're right that it takes a long time to move this knight, move the bishop on the king side, and finally get your king over there. It does take a little bit of time. So I think bishop g4 here would be a very tricky move for Papa. Go after the queen. Hope that Nim blunders it. And also, you're trying to get your queen over to c5. So let's just show on the board. If bishop g4, f3, you might have this kind of tactic with queen c5 check, picking up this bishop on c4. Mm-hmm. Rob, love the idea. Definitely not going to happen. I'm thinking he'll probably just grip and rip that bishop if he does go to g4 and then just back it off. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. oh. Or, sorry, I should have gone for the other call. He's just going <laughs> to blunder it. That was my backup call there. So the problem for black is that there are one, two, three pieces attacking this d5 square and only one, two defending, which means that after knight takes d5, Nim, yeah, he's got this one. I'm going to go out on a limb and say he probably didn't see the, the queen. I think maybe the knight or the queen. The bishop's too easy to miss. But right. that, that knight was a little sneaky there. Well, uh, let's, let's hear what Nim has to say because we can pull him up again and see if he's particularly mm -hmm. happy about what just happened. Uh, never pulls up the German big question guy. is what my next move is. <laughs> not my call. Because he's not going to keep on trading. He might trade the, 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 the – no, he's not going to trade anymore. I need to get my bishop out. Yep. Oh, sneaky. I see. Um, okay, this is actually kind of important. What's he going to do, Ludwig? Look, I, I have Papa Plot's stream open right now, and, and I'm just watching it. Could just do and that. it is a wall of sadges and knock like, like this. Ben SW is getting a lot of attention. Um, it It's bad. I will well, say, though, do he does see it. He does do that, see what you were talking about. I could so right this. now, he's considering, do all right, no, going for that, no, that, yeah, that queen no, to C5 okay, if he blocks with pawn. So, you know what? Maybe in our match against each other, I, must, I didn't give him enough credit, and maybe now I'm not giving him enough, enough credit either. Because this is the, the German wunderkind. You don't want to blunder. <laughs> Can't go here. Can't. I could go here. And Nim actually sees it as well. He's like, think about retreating his knight uh, to E3 eventually here? to block that check. With and I'm no the longer bishop. protecting the knight. He's, he's doing very well. I mean, if he sees knight takes knight, he, he wins the game. But I, I don't think he's necessarily going to see it here. Right, because if knight takes knight is check to the king, and you have to take back, and then that removes the defender of your bishop on g4. So that's uh, definitely a good move for Nim, but he didn't seem to be focused on that at all. He, yeah, I, I don't know what he'll do here. I think he'll move the queen somewhere. Hopefully it's not a square that loses the knight. And good okay. move. Queen However, now black and rip and grip with castle's queen side. Oh, my gosh. Grip it and rip it, baby. I... I <laughs> I think he's too fixated on doing something clever because this is the point of the game where it look. You go to you get your pieces out, and the center is good too, and protect the king. But then at some point, you're supposed to do some sick godly move that like wins you the game, and it's very clever. And you do 300 puzzles, and and I feel like this is the point. If I were Papa Pot, where I'm thinking, okay, I got to do the godlike move. I got this is the puzzle. Where's the move? But is there a move? No. no. <laughs> how, are you to, how do you guys know? How do you know when there's a move? <laughs> how do we know? Yeah, like, like, how do you know when you're in a tactic situation or you're just in a development situation? 
that's what makes us grandmasters. I think is that is that it's it's very hard actually to know because when you know it's a puzzle, you know there's some trick. But when you're in a game, it's very hard to spot it. So that's 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 one of the trickiest things in chess for everybody uh, to figure out. And even like when I play some games, I can feel that there's something, but that doesn't mean that I can just see it. So the intuition does matter for sure. Right. And there will be some moments where you feel like there must be something and then you kind of chicken out of it because you don't see it all the way to the conclusion, even if your intuition was right to begin with. But when you have a, a puzzle, you're kind of given the puzzle, which gives you information that there is a tactic available to you, which isn't always the case in the game. And the clock keeps ticking too. That's right. Right. Oh, this sucks. And he took it with check. So it's he such didn't a blend tease. It. It's such a tease that you can't take the queen to the rook. <laughs> it's like that scene in Borat where the sister's like, you're never going to get it. And then the brother, you know, I won't. I, he cried. I, yeah, exactly I, 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 okay. I, yeah, we I think it. we've all seen it. We yeah. all see that. It's an old movie. Old movie. Classic. Classic, classic, classic. <laughs> Sasha, right? Classic is one way of putting it. <laughs> that's a classic. Come on, that's up there with like cheaper by the dozen. Just the films that'll last, that'll go in Congress as a library. How is it that every time I've done either a lesson or commentary with one of the players in podcasts, I end up talking about movies Just every single time? Um, hey, because we're playing chess, we can't talk about women. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, so that was the only move he was allowed to make, right? That was it. That was you can't yeah, block yeah, yeah. he could have blocked a knight, but you can't yeah. interpose against the knight, obviously. So you either have to take or move the king. <laughs> Look at you using this fancy chess lingo, interpose. Robert, I just prefer to, you know, appreciate the beautiful game. Uh, now I do think I do think there's something clever he could do here, perhaps sack the queen. Harken to the Immortal game from 1851. <laughs> <laughs> I did like 30 minutes of YouTube video search last night. <laughs> so uh, where would you sacrifice this queen exactly? Uh, I would go for something crazy. Like I would put my bishop and I would put that king in check by bringing bishop to, uh, to B5. That's actually a very good move. So I don't know why it's good. I just know that every time I do a puzzle, it's good to have him in check and the bishop's protected. Uh, he decided to just let that bishop hang and bring the queen. Why is that good? Just because it's like a little bishop on bishop? Well, he, his bishop isn't under attack on c4 right now, and he moved his queen away from the attack of the rook. And by attacking this bishop on g4, if the bishop ever moves, you're not going to be able to castle your king because my queen is already on the open file line. So it's mm. going to be very difficult for black to ever get the king to safety. You think Nim thought of that? That'd be so five head. I've never once thought, hey, I should stop a castle. I just think, damn, that piece is a loser by itself. Let's attack it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm gaining confidence in Nim. The more I see him play, especially his game against Forsen, that was very impressive. So I think he, you know, he has some foresight here. Yeah, he definitely, uh, he definitely wasn't given enough credit. I think people gassed up like two three players maybe four i think it was like there was a big four coming in and that was it it was like box box hutch boy boy and uh forcing and then everyone else was just like the the fart of twitch and i think nims proved some that was you sick, seem though. you seem a little upset about that no it's fine it's just like you know rude but whatever, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> think what they want. i don't care i don't i don't you guys think i give it okay i don't i mean i thought i already commented your blindfold play yeah, but it just hurts that you have to reach to me not wearing anything on my eyes or not being able to see <laughs> rather than just my regular play. You never said, hey, Ludwig, I love your regular play against Choco Bars where you were able to play good. I, I didn't didn't watch that, that match. I will say UGMs are, are already too soft on us. I mean, Whoa. Hikaru says the word perfect like 17 times a match and we are not i feel like all we're doing is maybe not making three blunders and only making one and then it's like nearly perfect play but in reality our positions are probably so bad that we get torqued by even you know you made zero blunders Alex. in your second game yesterday to be fair yeah but they, they still could have done smart stuff but i still would have gotten like torqued by like alex right yeah this is true but you weren't playing alex that's true and I couldn't because she is busy on a dating show, which is why I'm filling in here today. Hopefully she finds love, boys. Bring out your, what's a emote for that? Uh, your 
Alex Botez W's in chat. <laughs> My roommate's actually on the show right now. Really? Yeah. He's looking for love. He's on the show. Um, I think he's, but you know, he's going to try his best. He's a catch. <laughs> oh, you sound like a, a very good roommate. You, you, you know, you're picking him up here. He holds 30 well. Okay. Don't know where to move on uh, from here besides <laughs> the chessboard. <laughs> so let's look at the chessboard and why don't we listen to Nim's thoughts and see how he feels like he can put away this game. That's a move. Where's he going to go then? He just goes here? Damn, five-head commentary from Nim. <laughs> need somebody to spit bars now. Yo, okay. you, oh, damn. So he did do okay. this. I was about to drop some. I had a hot five. I had a tight um, five That's fine, I think. Because I, I just go here now. He can't take it. Oh, he's using your idea, Ludwig. Mm -hmm. Now he can move his king here instead, I suppose. A little too late, though, Robert. He lost uh, a little bit of tempo. Uh, I'm going to have to play fast now. I hope I'm not missing something. But I don't think I am. So he moves king here, probably. Um, allowing for this move. Yep. Now he has to move his rook. Uh-oh. 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 His queen can get trapped now. Wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me find. Why is this bad? This is bad because... Th uh, this. Oh no, yeah, I, I see it. Guys, explain rook. it because now what can happen? And I could actually give him. Wait, a you said you no. see it. Trouble. Yeah, no, I do see it, but explain what it to viewers it? at home. And you, well, no. So like, what it is <laughs> is that now he can. What he can do is okay, his I think queen. This was like a defining moment. All I have to do now. Okay, is so, so in this spot, I'll explain it. I'll explain it, guys. In this spot, this is bad for white because black now has the opportunity to trap the queen. And how would you trap the queen? I would trap the queen personally with the with the piece. Which mm -hmm. piece? <laughs> oh, that's a good question, Robert, but there's so many. Uh, I personally, if I'm trying to trap a queen here, I would go for that good old fashioned rook. No, the rook, yep. No, the pawn, excuse me, the pawn. <laughs> yep, the pawn. Bring the pawn down to A4 because it's protected by the rook. Where can that queen go? Let's Let's look, oh. Oh, and h4 was the correct move, by the way. It was. Yeah, this queen yeah. has no moves because all the squares are covered, and uh, that would have trapped the queen. And, you know, even though Papa Plots beat me in a game, obviously my analysis is a little higher. I was able to find it by myself <laughs> much quicker, and he didn't. He ended up going for a super dumb move. But I think he did see it because he's really mauled. So you, you think he, he saw it? I mean, he's, like, sighing, like, so much. Like, I've never sighed this much in my life. I don't know what could happen. That would make he's doing the horse noises. Do you see that he he just went? I don't know what could drive him to do that outside of noticing that I could have had a free queen. What if he realized that he put his rook on a square where oh, the bishop just took it? So maybe he realized his rook wasn't in any sort of safety. Oh yeah, he just put his rook too. I didn't even see that. Damn, that's crazy. You're crazy for that one, Pop Lots. I'll say it. <laughs> I feel like you. You kind of want Pop Plot to win, even though he's not doing so on this game, because doesn't that make you look better? Uh, it does make me look better, but it also ruins the narrative that I threw and I could have won. True. <laughs> Which is a narrative that I didn't make, but has been going on. Mm -hmm. uh, people... Yeah, I have heard that. It's true. Twitch has really made, it's made the rounds there. A lot of rumors about that one. A lot of rumors. Rumors is all they are, though. Okay. Well, in this game, so... Let's see. White is now up a rook for a pawn, and his king is out in the open. So you should probably try to just put this rook to d1, give it a check, and this king is just you're gonna try to hunt it down. He puts it on this mm -hmm. rook on d1. Great move. Yeah, this as long as long as long as they don't get too low on time. Although Ludwig would have more of a more insight into this. How do you feel when you're running out of time? Uh, I think I hope to outplay my opponent enough that I can have two rooks or a queen rook or two queens. So then, because you get five seconds every move, it's free. It's very mm -hmm. easy to walk down. You can do a lot of moves to stall and gain time. What do you call it? You can spaghetti them, flag them, one of the words. And and, and you can do that. Uh, but if, if it's like a harder mate, like if it's mm -hmm. bishop, queen, I'd be very stressed. But Nims outplayed him enough that yeah. it's, it shouldn't be a problem. 
He has, but now he's dropping closer to two minutes. Uh, he, he did make a move, Rook to E1, which he just put his Rooks in the center of the board. The Rook in E1 isn't doing anything from the spot just yet, but it's also hard for Black to make a move down a Rook. And you need to come up with plans here. So, Hikaru, do you see any plans that Papa Plaza can maybe go for that could give him some chances either to for Nims to walk to a blunder or just kind of counterattack? Um, not really, because he can't put the rook on that on the g8 square down towards the white king. If he could do something like that, where he could attack the queen and the king, maybe, but the, the lack of being able to do that, um, I think he's unfortunately going to lose this game pretty soon. Yeah, and he goes to attack Nim's rook. I think Nim is one of the best at avoiding these blunders, where sometimes players don't realize a piece under attack. Here, the bishop is right next to the rook, but I think Nim isn't particularly good about avoiding just. A, a one move mistake like that. Mm -hmm. Very. Is true. this one a best of three? Best of two. It's two games. Best of white two, best and black. Of yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, then a tiebreaker. It's weird how you call it best of two though. Yeah, I, I think it's in chess. It's just because you have to have an even number with both colors. That's that's the reason. Uh, yeah. Unlike a lot of other things, because almost anything else is like going to be an odd number, like best of three or best of mm -hmm. five, best of seven, whatever it is. But, but chess, because you want to be fair, both players have to get, get the same number of games with, with white and black. And Ludwig, let me ask you, for you, does it make a difference if you have white in the first game or black in the first game? The only difference is if they play an opening that I've never seen before. Like, if I'm playing white and then they hit me with the Sicilian, it's, it, I feel terrible about myself. But outside of that, it's not too bad. And Hikaru, what about you? When you play in these in this kind of match play, do you prefer to have white in the first game or black, or does it depend on the? the um, opponent? I prefer to have black almost always because you, you basically try to play defense. Um, since since normally you're going to try to beat your opponent with white, having white having the white pieces tends to be uh, tends to be favorable. I like having black so that if I draw the game or I, I don't lose the game, basically I'm I'm very much in the driver's seat. Makes perfect sense. Um, I feel the same way. And also, I feel the same way as you, Ludwig. I hate playing as the Sicilian. Too sharp for me. It's wh What does that mean, by the way? Because I was watching a video on the Sicilian dragon style, and they said it's the sharpest Sicilian. And that, I don't, is that like, like it's it's aggressive? It means it's the, the system that's most likely to have a result where white wins the game or black wins the game at the at the highest level is, is what it means. So that, it just means you're going to have a decisive result probably like 70 to 80% of the time. Uh, did Papa Plots just like make mate come faster now? Let yeah, Rook C8, there. I think, is just game over pretty much. Yeah, he also doesn't have much time. He's already down a bunch of pieces, so he's trying his best to fend him off. But if Nim, Nim sees Rook C8, he's just mopping up. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's also a good move. This Rook's under attack. You kind of want to keep the Rook on the last rank so that this Queen doesn't come and try to checkmate the King. But the rook is nowhere to go except for the square. He's also down to seven seconds. Is this going to be the first player who's lost in time? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I. Uh, it is on time. I think it's the first time I've seen that in the Pog Champs. I, he's upset about it, which I'm surprised by because it's like, I don't think time was the only factor here to be concerned about, but clearly not happy with his play. As we say in German, though, passiert den Besten. Can you, can you translate that for our <laughs> English audience? Robert, please. Come on. Everybody knows. Happens to the best, right? Passiert den Besten. It's mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, my, my German friend here does have another game, and this time he'll be playing as white, which, you know, for us shitters, uh, it's, yeah, I think it's, it's actually somewhat good. I think it's better. You, you, can, you can play your E4 off rip and White's supposed to be better. I don't know if it is, but it makes me feel more confident. Mm -hmm. Right. You gotta, you gotta control the action. You get the first move, so you feel like you dictate what's about to happen in the game. And well, you've played Papa Plaza before. And so do you think he has a, a good chance to come back, or do you think Nim is proving too solid? Feels like you guys like to bring up my loss against Papa Plaza a lot to uh kind of show his skill, but you know, yeah, Robert, I do think he has a good chance here. Look, if he beat me then he can beat anyone around my skill. And, and Nim, <laughs> I'm not going to say whether or not he's around my skill. I'm a firm 850 uh, rated player. Uh, what is Nim? What is Nim? 1,050? Uh, he's yeah. like 750. What? 
No, Nim's like a oh, thousand. Nim, oh, sorry, Nim. No, oh, Nim is like God. a thousand. Nim is, sorry. You make me feel so bad about myself. Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. Nim is like a thousand fifty, but he was seven hundred when he, I think they, he started um, getting lessons. So he's improved a lot. Uh, what's I don't know. What do you you guys should know? Like, how how high can you punch up in in terms of like beating people who are better than you? Like, what's a realistic? Occasionally, you can bink one if grandmaster probably i mean grandmasters it's different because i would say like uh someone who's an international master or even someone who's a master they can win at a, a higher percentage whereas like let's just say you're 1000 rated you will probably lose like 95 percent of the time to someone who's say 400 points above you okay but for wow. a grandmaster like if i'm say 2700 i play someone who's 2300 i probably will win something like 85 to 90 percent so the percentage goes down a little bit okay yeah. Because the higher the ratings, usually the uh, well fewer mistakes are made. Also, by the way, Papa Plata sacrificed a pawn here in the opening. So he's definitely been taking lessons. We're going to rewind for a second. Wait, did he play the Smith Moore Gambit? He played the Smith Moore Gambit, which gives you gave him a pawn here. You give him a second pawn to get one pawn back, but you get quick development and control over the center. Uh, I got to be honest, that seems terrible. I feel like you should just take with your queen. What, what, why did Smith Moore do this? Well, you do it because you get very rapid development. And now in this position, so let's think about the dynamics here. Mm -hmm. Black is up a pawn. White has the bishop pair, and in particular, this dark square bishop. And you can already apply pressure on some of the pieces. So you just have more flexibility in your structure and uh, more space for your remaining pieces, but you are down that pawn. So Hikaru, I have no idea who's been coaching Papa Plaza. But. I don't like the opening choice. I think I think uh, uh, as P, as most of the players here are pretty new to the game, I think it's it's too hard to conceptually understand how to how to attack uh, from the start of the game. So I think this is a very tough tough position. I'm actually with Hikaru on this. I think the Smith Morrow is not the one I would have suggested for Papa Plaza either. Yeah, I, I think part of it is because in this opening, you often have to sacrifice multiple pieces. Like there's some lines where you sacrifice a second pawn. And it's very hard for people to do because you're taught protect your pieces, keep them on safe squares. Don't go mm -hmm. ahead and give away uh, free stuff. But part of this opening is going for an attack with an eventual E5. So I do think that, relatively speaking, Pop Plata has handled this quite well. But I'm, I agree with both of you that it is very difficult to wrap your head around, like, why would I give up a pawn for nothing that I can concretely see? Having more peace better than having less peace. Mm -hmm. True. True. I, I don't know how to counter that statement. Do you have a follow up? <laughs> uh, no. I, I I'm just I'm just I, I agree with it only in the sense that when I bring out my queen early, it makes me nervous because then they just chase down my queen, and so that was the alternative, right? It was taking with queen, right? And mm -hmm. that and that's so I hate that. I hate that, and I hate when people do it to me too. It's it always ends early, um, on either side. It's a very stressful situation for a newer player to try to protect the queen. It's true. And I guess there are a lot of stresses for players who have just been playing for a shorter period of time. And I mean, Nim is handling this quite well, but look at this rook on D1 and this pawn on D6 behind is a queen on D8. So at some point soon, Papa Plata is going to think about pushing his pawn up to E5 because this pawn on D6 can't capture back. As we all know, this is a, a pretty legendary pin here with the rook attacking the queen. So um, at this at this point, Papa Plata, even if he doesn't know the moves, he's still following the basic plan that, that whoever he took lessons from showed him. So I, I like what he's doing. And what's the name of this pin, right? We have so many new names, new chess terminology. This pin needs a new name too, I feel like. You know what? Let's give one of the let's give one of the, the new boys. Call it the Hessian. <laughs> the Hessian <laughs> pin. You gotta get Botez got the queen, the, the Botez Gambit. And let's be real, I call that cultural appropriation. Because she does not blunder her queen nearly as much as I do, or, or, or my main man XQC. It seems messed up. I feel like we should be giving it to the new guys, the Robert Hesses of the world. It's the Hessian pin. <laughs> <laughs> and when he goes for it. Oh, man. Honestly, Papa Plotz is doing well here. I don't know. I mean, this, as far as chess terms go, having a pin against the queen, that feels like a pretty good one I've named after you. And. I won't comment more on the Botez Gambit. It, it, it's named after her for a reason. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. She, she does drop her queen quite regularly. Now, can you guys follow my line here? 
Yes. If I'm white, can I just take that horse? If they take, if black takes with queen, I, I get a free pawn, right? There's a hanging pawn mm -hmm. in the center. Uh, or if they take with the other pawn, then it's, you know, bad structure for the king. In this scenario, it's not bad to just take it, even though everybody likes to bring up that bishops are technically more valuable in tight spaces than, than knights. Right. You're getting a clear benefit from taking here because the queen, as you said, is protecting the pawn d6. But the so that's one threat that white has. The second threat, which is very powerful, is because both this pawn and now this knight are pinned. This move pawn e5, you can't capture it, and you can't move your knight away because of the pin of this bishop on the knight. So you're actually sort of attacking everything oh. if white got a free move to play e5. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of hard to see, I'll be honest. I think one of the best tactics that, like, because we were talking about how it's hard to know when to use tactics and when to not use tactics. The one tactic that you can try to bring out is just discovered uh, either checks or attacks on, like, higher-ranked pieces. And so, mm -hmm. like, if, if you could make them find you a discovery, that always works against uh, players rated around 1,000. So I, I think, actually, are you aware that you missed this idea yesterday in your first game where you, you had a bishop that was pinning the knight and the queen and you could have pushed a pawn to win the knight on, on this dark square, this F6 what, square? What do you want me to say? You want me to say, yes, I'm aware? I, no, no, I mean, no, I mean did you look it. at it after the game? I don't oh. mean if you were aware during the game. No, of course you weren't aware during the game or you would have played it. <laughs> Uh, absolutely not. No, absolutely not. I, I, I did in, I was in one of those scenarios where I was coached to do openings and I was supposed mm -hmm. to follow a line and that was one of the lines, but I didn't know if the moves that my opponent made triggered what I was that, that move. So right. it's one of those scenarios where I wasn't thinking and I was trying to remember and I ended up playing the wrong thing. I think it's one of the hard things about trying to follow coach openings, uh, with such a short time frame. Yeah, actually I was talking with that about about that with Fusli last night it's it is very difficult when you feel like you're memorizing a series of moves because you want and she's asked this albert has also asked this in box box he said can i just play this opening against anything my opponent does i want one of those but the problem yeah. is as soon as your opponent makes a different move and you continue with the plan you originally had the position has changed so you always should be reacting to your opponent's last move seeing what has just changed for instance well what White just made this move C4. We know that this pawn here is attacking this pawn on B5. So like that threat is pretty abundantly clear. Whereas in the opening stages, it's not always clear because there's not tension. Pieces aren't attacking each other so much. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I think, I don't know. I just remember learning early that like openings don't matter and that you can do many openings and it, like it'll lead to mid game or end game. I think Magnus Carlsen said it once. And I, and I was like, oh, true, five head. But then it's like he only can say that because he's memorized everything he's supposed to do for like a hundred different openings, uh, and they don't bring up that part. Right, that's that's true for for all grandmasters. Uh, we we we've memorized a lot. But the funny thing is what you said about the memorizations. That's actually a big deal when we play because very often times with computers aiding in preparation, there are moments where you feel like you have to play the right moves. So you're trying really hard to remember the move instead of trying to just find a good move in whatever the position is. Do you guys use memory devices or do you just like remember it? I mean, like for me, it's just repetition over and over in chess programs. I don't know about Robert, but I, I've never done specific training on that. Tell me you have a castle, Robert, and then you go into a door and it's the Sicilian door <laughs> and then it has the bookshelf like Sherlock <laughs> Holmes does. So, in, in so I try to play a different opening pretty much every game. It backfires quite often, <laughs> but it's fun where... I feel like you're hard to pin down because in chess, you can go online and study the database and see what a, a person's history is. Mm -hmm. And if you play something different in every game, then how are you supposed to know what your, that opponent's going to do in that game? And of course, Hikaru himself has many different openings and the top players, they're all well-versed in a variety of stuff. So it does become difficult, and Hikaru can speak this much better than I can, in any given game to anticipate what your opponent will do. And that's why the repetition and studying all these different openings is very important. So that if you're caught by surprise on that day, you can still rely on what you've studied in the past. That makes sense. Yeah. Generally, that's true. The only problem is when you play too many openings and you aren't sure what the best moves are. Sometimes you can forget what the best line against Evans Gambit is and put a bishop on d6 <laughs> and lose, uh, lose to somebody in the U.S. Championship. There uh, is so, that problem. So, Ludwig, that, that was... I feels like we're getting touchy here. <laughs> Ludwig, yeah, you don't have to be here for this. Um, you know, you can go. Uh, the gloves are coming off right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying I want chess boxing to make a little comeback, and I think it can happen on Twitch. So if you guys want to glove up, 
Throw on some 30 ounce gloves and get at it. A little chess boxing between you two. How do you think you would do in chess boxing? I would love to chess box, but I was talking about this with Alex. I would like to do like a tag team. So like one boxer, one chess player. And I was talking about how she would get the mountain. And I was thinking I could team up with Hikaru, but I would be playing the chess. So you would. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I, got, I think I got good odds against Alex. You know, you, you can figure Better out. Odds. Your thing. Yeah. Just run some computer Sims against the mountain. I'm sure you'll be fine, man. You'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's awesome. Well, back to the game. <laughs> yeah, Paplots so, missed a hanging pawn, right? That was yeah. on B5, and then he just decided to back off because he understood there was pressure on his bishop. But yeah, he, he could have not only taken, but also defended the bishop. Uh, so now he's in a tight spot. Like, this is uncomfortable. Yeah, he moved his rook to the open file, but sort of forgot that his rook was protecting his pawn, and Nim took it. And honestly, Nim has been very impressive. I, I said this earlier. He just hasn't made many mistakes and of course he's not always finding the absolute best move turn after turn but he hasn't made zero blunders from what i've seen throughout this entire event Mm -hmm. uh yeah the program didn't like that move but that's the move you guys wanted why is it bad now um or is probably because since white has less white has two less pawns here you want to keep as many things as many pieces on the board as you can and the more things that come off then then the material disadvantage is going to play a bigger role mm-hmm. also and also if, if you go back one movie you look at white's rooks they're both on very pretty open lines here on the c file and d file they, they have plenty of targets or open spaces to go to and when you do this you sort of you're going to have rooks come off the board on the next move i see yeah and you made this rook here on d8 a better piece because the rook was passively defending the pawn now, once we start trading, this rook gets open. But Nim makes a tricky move. He takes this knight on f3 that was here. And Pavel Plaza can take back this bishop, but only with the pawn because the rook is here. So he does take with the pawn. But he also could have considered taking on f6 with his pawn because if you take my queen, I take yours. And so it's a, mm-hmm. a very fancy queen trade. But instead, he decided, all right, that's uh, a lot of calculation. Let's just capture back here. And now the problem for white is this open king is another thing to worry about mm-hmm. and one thing yeah. i mean i think ludwig can speak to this better than i can but what i've noticed with most of the people when they've taken lessons they generally the main thing is trying not to blunder something like give away a bishop or a rook whatever it is but they don't have this natural attacking instinct where they're willing to just like give up pause and just try to checkmate the opponent from the very start i think that's one of the issues with playing an opening like this you're gambiting pawns at the start and from what i've seen almost nobody has that instinct outside of maybe forcing and Slicker. Mm-hmm. Also, right. Yeah. <laughs> Slicker doesn't mind giving up the house as long as he's going for the checkmate. Uh, yeah, it's actually something that I've, I've like tried to do recently is just ignore the opening. Because if you just – the openings are good, and they're meant to set you up for success in the future. But the goal of the opening is only to help you checkmate later. And I think we forget about that sometimes, and we're like, oh, I'm supposed to do this. And you forget, like, all you got to do is checkmate. And he's going to blunder. So the opening line theorem anyway doesn't matter because they're going to make so many mistakes or so many inaccuracies or so many blunders that you're not going to be playing any line that you guys have played in 10 years. So uh, I think I think trying to think of, like, the main mating routes, whether it's, like, you know, a, a, what do you call them, backdoor mates or back any of rank, those things. Back rank. Yeah, back rank. <laughs> backdoor is a cooler name, though. I would suggest mm-hmm. maybe the Hess backdoor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, or something like that, because like, you can get sneaky mates really early, even if you're super down on material. Because they'll like, oftentimes the way people like to win early on is just by outplaying your opponent enough to get two queens or two rooks, and then walking them down a checkmate. And you can get a checkmate before them, even if you're down a rook or two bishops or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that's why, as you were saying earlier, you're just memorizing series moves is very difficult because oftentimes it's not going to happen anyway. So it's more about trying to help people understand the foundation of the position, which pawns you may or may not want to move, where your pieces, where their natural squares are, and if they can go to those squares, depending on what your opponent does. So I'm totally with you, and I think that it is very difficult for uh, new learners to figure out how to play the opening because, like, didn't you just say any opening is good? Well, it depends on your style. I don't know what my style is because I just started playing chess, so what are you asking for? But speaking of back rank checkmates. Yeah, this is good because you can you can ooh, you can do something juice here. You put your rook all the way at the top. 
he'll likely I, I think you'd interpose with his knight to be honest but then no he can't because you'd lose his queen so he'd have to move his king over to the h7 file and then you can move your queen to put him in no you can't you can put him yeah to the left one yep. put him in check and then what what and then he has to how do you do it there you block with pawn and see i, I get into this spot a lot and then the question is now what mm -hmm. i do get like tempo where you get a couple checks but to find like the mate uh, or i'll search for it for hours and then sometimes it's just not there is it here in this scenario Nope. Well, the way you should do it is actually, it, it doesn't exist in the first place, but the way to try and do it would be to put the bishop back on the B1 square, the light square, first before the check. So if you put the bishop back to back here, then you cover that square. So you threaten to move your rook all the way down. So, okay, so you don't, it's like you got to do it in a two-phase thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the advantage of bringing your bishop back is you saw that in the other position, you put your pawn on G6, but here G6 drops this pawn over on H6. So that's why you bring another piece into the attack, the bishop, which wasn't doing anything, and you have the queen to go free over to the king side. But he did take on f6, and after queen takes f6, he brought the check in, okay. and now he's thinking about what to do. But you've actually helped black because now this queen is more menacing against this king on g1. The king is still very open. Yeah, I think that happens to me a lot. It's just you do the moves in the wrong order. Like while you're doing a move, you'll see you could have done another one. And it's like, I don't know if you guys have ever played Smash, but it's like when you try to like up smash someone and they shield it and you're like, I'll just go for it again later. And it's <laughs> it's oftentimes too late. Like you you miss your opportunity for it. Uh, so he do, is, did he do this? Is this him? He went for the bishop? He went for the bishop, Right, but yeah. the problem is now it's only one bishop and now when black pushes the pawn, the king is just very safe and protected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the queen helps out in the defense and in the attack. So it's just covering some important squares here. And what White would love to do is bring this queen into d8 and line up the queen and the rook. But that's why this queen being here is so important, is it covers the d8 square. So we'll trade here if you try to launch the queen up. Yeah. So there's nothing super clever he can do. He has to now go back to the old mentality of let's try to get better positioning and take pieces and protect the king. Right. Right. But the problem is it's much too late now because there is it's so limited. You only have a queen, a rook, and a bishop, and you have a lot less. You have three less pawns here. So it's uh, are you calling it pretty bad? What's that? Are you calling it? Not quite. I think the next two moves will will decide what happens. Right. Either either Nim is going to blunder a checkmate, or the queens will come. There's going to be queens or rooks or something will come off the board, and then and then um, Papa Plata will have no chance. And Rook A8, he tries to just keep this Rook stuck on A3, and I think it's actually a pretty smart move because now you see the Rook can capture an F3 but you lose this knight on a6, so you don't want to move your rook away. And if you're so tempted by queen takes pawn on f3, now you have to be concerned about this move queen to d8 that we we're talking about, and in comes checkmating ideas along the yeah. back right. Mm -hmm. So I actually think rook a8 was a kind of brilliant move, and he, oh, look at him. Queen oh, g5 check. Oh, wow. Excellent. What a move. What? Why was that? Because now you have to oh, create, you have to okay, do the exchange okay, see, of queens, see, and you're behind, you have three less pawns, so basically you're just, because you're down so much, trading down is, is a good thing here and nim doesn't have that much time so if he was facing an attack he would burn clock and then get himself into some real pressure now with two minutes in the clock up three pawns what is this formation what what is this it's like a it's like a torch it's the, upside uh, down. the the wooden the wooden full helm i believe <laughs> what it's called. Uh, oh my in this spot you got to go for something cheesy right is there cheese in chess do you consider there to be cheese the, the, yeah, there, there is. There, there, there are things. Usually it's in the opening stage when you try to go for the quick checkmates. But here, yeah, it's like he, he probably should like make a, take the knight or something and hope that Nim doesn't see it. Something like that. That would be the closest thing to a cheese at this point. I'm thinking in my head you bring rook to a7. Mm -hmm. And then you can attack that guy uh, mm -hmm. with your you, – with your, you can take uh, the other pawn with your bishop, right? Mm -hmm. If he doesn't move the king. And then do something there. Is there a right. check with rook bishop in the corner there? Well, so the problem is you only have two things. So, yeah, if you move the rook up, that is probably one of the best moves. Okay, it goes bishop e4. But then I just move my king over, and I just guard all the pawns. Mm -hmm. that, that's really the problem is, like, a rook and a bishop are good, but you only have two things that you can attack with. So it's just, it's just not enough to checkmate the king, especially here where the king is protected by so many pawns. Yeah, this, this parabolic pawn structure over here is... 
really help in. It's like a field goal post. I can't figure out what it looks like, but it's something. Field, field goal post is good. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll, we'll, see, we'll, Robert, a little sporty. All right. Oh. People like to talk trash on chess players. A little sporty there, Robert. I like it. <laughs> I Robert love sports. loves sports. Yeah. Sport guy? Yeah. What's your but, main sport? Well, I love basketball, but the Knicks are terrible. Well, let's not talk about this now. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> You're a Knicks fan? <laughs> yeah. Who do you support? <laughs> the Celtics. Oh, gosh. <laughs> the oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. It's like being a Hans fan. Hey, Chess.com, can I leave now? Can I get out of here? I'm commenting with a Celtics fan? Is this a joke? Oh, gosh. This, is, this hurts. This hurts. Hey, but meanwhile, Nim is, is playing great. Oh, my gosh. Wait, but Nim can, Nim can take the rook, right? He can just take – it's his move. What happened? He can just take the rook. Hey, he can just take the rook, but then they just take with pawn, right? Uh, with a bishop, yeah, but the thing is, then then you can just push your pawn down to make a queen. This uh, pawn on the b b file. Mm-hmm. I see. And th- see, he actually reacted because he saw the knight attacking the bishop, and the knight just moved. So it's another good example of reacting to the immediate threat. Wow. And he didn't have a choice, but Nim is playing perfectly. Just really, this game was. And I know a lot of what you said. We say perfect too often. A lot. But it makes us feel good. But there there really weren't mistakes here from Nim's point of view. Yeah, I feel like the way Nim played is that Papalat had to do something. Papalat had to do something cool to like. He had to like do a smart move to win the game. Nim was not going to hand it to him, and it's really hard to find really good moves uh, when you're used to playing people who are bad, and then you can find them because they give you the game. Nim did not give him the game; he had to win it, and he he couldn't here. Yeah, I would agree. I think that's that's a absolute correct assessment. It's just like. Nim just isn't making any mistakes. So, so like, that's the other thing. When I say perfect, what it means is just, like, the quality of the moves, there were no, there really were no mistakes, and there was nothing really that your opponent could do other than, like, other than find some brilliant idea to win the game. And, mm-hmm. uh, and yeah, it was just too much here. Exactly also, right. Nim's making all these moves, the last several moves, in two seconds. Like, he knows that he's completely winning, and he's got it under control. Well, Ludwig and Hikaru, if Nim doesn't lose this game, which he won't at this point, he goes on to face Hutch, and Hutch is a longtime chess player. He's mm-hmm. been playing fantastically himself. What do you rate Nim's chances as? Um, quite difficult because Hutch has clearly played a lot online. He's also taken lessons over many years. Um, I would say maybe like I would say twenty percent. Hutch got me into chess uh, a long time ago. He was like because when I was trying to learn chess, he was one of the only people who weren't like you know, like like a chess guy. He was like a normal guy who played chess. So it was easier to consume his content. Uh, and so I watched chess like ha- had to have been like eight years ago, seven years ago, whenever it was. Uh, so I, 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 I think Hutch, maybe I just, uh, I'm a little biased. I think he's got a great chance mm-hmm. of the whole thing, honestly. Yeah, I agree with that. Nim's going to get a queen. Oh, Nim does this sometimes where he doesn't just get queens. He, do- he gets mad when his opponents don't resign. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's the that's the that's the he's Swedish, right? Yeah. Yes. That's that Swedish resentment. <laughs> that they I love how you're a connoisseur of both German. Oh, and, you see, Bob and... is really upset. <laughs> oh, that makes me feel bad, honestly. <laughs> well, he Nim's like, like a really nice guy. I like Nim here. He thinks he should resign. <laughs> I feel bad because it's Papa Plot, who's like you know just like a nice guy mm-hmm. who's doing this thing. And but if it was a rando online who wasn't resigning in this spot. And basically just trying to get me to do the execution test of getting two queens and then mating. That's frustrating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, mostly because I might it up too. And I, I don't want to do that. Well, Nim did this against Slicker in the opening match. And I didn't feel bad at all for Slicker. And I like <laughs> Slicker a lot. But there was no sympathy. It but for Papa Plata, I, I definitely, he seems like such a nice dude. Uh, yeah. Yeah, his chat is full of sages right now, too, which makes it a little harder. <laughs> I don't know how you say the fart of Twitch in German, but... Wait, why I do you play E2? Means... He probably wants to promote to knights and stuff. Oh, okay. Okay, now I think he sees it, yeah. I want him to promote to a knight. Oh, there's a rook. He is? He's so grimy. <laughs> I didn't know Nim had this in him. Yep, against 
against Slicker, he did something similar. He's going to keep pushing the pawns. That's what he's going to do. Look at his face. Yeah, you can see his face. Yeah. <laughs> He's he's switching between like joy and then just absolute like menacing glare. Here comes the next pawn. <laughs> oh, this is painful. He's gonna get the same checkmate too that I think he had against Slicker. The worst part about this is that people are pause champing in Papa Lot's chat. They're, they're, don't pause champ. It's over, man. It's over. He's toying with you. And the thing is, even a stalemate wins Nim the match. Right. Yeah. Oh, that hurts. Oh, another rook. <laughs> this oh, hurts. Oh. Oh, well, Nim takes this one 2 0. And for Pablo Plata, it was a good event for him. He made it all into the championship bracket, probably unexpectedly. I know it mm -hmm. came unexpected to you, Ludwig, but it was a good event for him. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good event for him. He had some great wins against some people. Yeah, named Ludwig. I don't think we need to bring them up again, Robert. I feel like we've talked about it enough. He's beaten some people, and now he lost, and we don't got to worry about it anymore. All right, Constellation's where it's at anyway. I, I kind of feel that, honestly. The Constellation bracket is a ton of fun. And speaking of the Constellation bracket, well, we have another match ahead of us after our interviews. We'll be seeing XQC take on Fusli in their quarterfinal matchup. The winner of that match gets to play none other than you, Ludwig. I'm, I'm going to study this like a hawk. <laughs> That's why you joined for commentary today. No. Is that, so you could see your next competitor in action no. with Grandmasters commenting right. on the moves. Exactly. But if you guys would wouldn't mind just bringing up like certain things that they're doing, I, that would be fine. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't. That's not how I would surmise it. I have a dearth of knowledge. I'm trying to d depart. Well, you're using some great vocabulary. You clearly read the dictionary recently. So, <laughs> on on that note, we're going to go to our break. When we return, we will have interviews with both Nim and Papa Plata, and we'll be back shortly. Stay tuned, everybody. And we are back bringing in Nim, who moves on to the semifinals of the championship bracket. Nim, congrats, man. You played a great match. Thank you very much. Oh, did I? Yes, you did. <laughs> Tell me more about it. You did my boy <laughs> dirty, Nim. You did my boy <laughs> dirty. You crushed him, but you did him dirty. Okay, so, okay. Sh should I explain once more now in front of, since we're live, why I keep doing this, promoting the bishops or the, the rooks and everything? The floor is yours. Okay, the reason I do this is because I take it as an insult. If people don't resign when the game is obviously over, I take it as an insult. They think I'm going to misplay so bad that I'm going to stalemate the game. And so uh, so I take it as BM from them. And then if you BM me, I'm just going to BM you back. It was a good game. It was a good game. And I'm, I don't have anything against it. I can just hear Anakin Skywalker's uprising music playing softly <laughs> in the background. Nim. You're, you're merciless. You're My merciless. chat's pretty upset with me. They're all they're all saying yeah, I have a huge ego now because of all of these games. <laughs> <laughs> ego, Andy. But you look, you did beat Force in, and I I was saying earlier that there are four favorites going in. You weren't one of them. People are talking about Box Box, Hutch, Voy Boy, and uh, Force in, and and yeah. you you were the you're the fifth. You're the secret fifth. Um. Yeah. I actually uh, I, I didn't even see it coming myself. To be honest, I don't really know how I managed to get this far, but uh. Do you think I you have mean, a shot at the title? No, <laughs> actually, I don't <laughs> think so. I mean, I'm not gonna. I might have a big ego now, but my ego is not that big. Uh, okay. I've, so, I've seen some of the other guys play. I think I, even though I'm very happy with my performance, I think I've improved a lot. Uh, I think they're on a different level than me, and I, I'd, I'd be very surprised if again, I, if I think this, this is where it ends. But I'm very happy. So, well, I'm in danger of inflating your ego more. Hikaru, what can you say about Nim's play in this match? And overall, yeah, I, I thought in general your play was very good. You've you've, you've got this like uh, you've, you've got this very weird talent, unlike most of the other players, where you can actually use a lot of time, but you don't sort of lose your mind. Most of the other players I've noticed when they start using too much time, they panic. And you found mm -hmm. a way not to panic, even when you're getting down to like the three minutes or two minutes on the clock. And you've just a fantastic job of that. So um, it's just been great to watch how you've improved from the very start to where you are now and being one of, one of the top players, honestly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, I feel like I'm, a, I'm definitely a bit faster. I think for most of the games, he was lower than me on time, right? But uh, mm -hmm. one of them got dicey. But I usually, I usually, uh, 
by the time I'm too low on time, it just the game is usually somewhat decided. So so far that's worked out, but I'm just waiting for a game where it like his first game, of course, that was unfortunate for him. Yeah, yeah I was talking about I, I run into a similar uh, similar problem where if I don't have such a big lead where I can win with like a two queen or rook queen mate, then time mm. will be a huge problem. So like I need to be beating them big enough that I don't have to worry about time. Otherwise, I have to come up with a creative mate and I can't do it with like a minute left. I remember that I watched your game like yesterday or something. And one thing that I thought about was that, uh, okay, now I'm really ego faced because it sounds like I'm going to try to coach you or something. But uh, <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm, what? Only, I'm just a consolation player. So please, <laughs> please, I would love if a champion could tell me what, what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> but please, Nick, please. Okay, I'm going to like, no, but one thing that I noticed when I saw you playing your game was that you would think on your turn, you'd make a move and then you'd sit there completely quiet and just kind of stare at the chessboard or, or, um, so it seemed like, but I could be wrong, but it seems like you don't uh -huh. use your opponent's turn to think, which, you know, that gives you twice the time. If you do well, that. that's their turn. So I'm, I usually, yeah, just but you can think about, you can think about either what, what's their most like, if you think about what their most likely move is, um, then you're already ready to respond by the time they make it. I'm sorry. I back up. So you think during their turn? Yes. Nim, That's you have great. just ascended That's from player so to coach. I think next time this happens, <laughs> you're going to be a PodChamps coach because you worded that so perfectly. Wow. Thank you. That's it's when cool. I take my smoothie breaks, Robert, and I feel like you guys are not understanding the importance of getting in good calories and good nutrition while playing. It's a <laughs> long match. <laughs> My ego is so inflated now. I'm going to start hovering in my chair, I think. Yeah, we're, we're about to let you go. But thank you so much for joining us for this interview. And congrats again. You're really playing great. So uh, you're up against you. Hutch next. I think it's yeah. going to be a fun match. And I think you can do, do pretty well. So keep fun, it up. Fun and huge quotation marks. <laughs> hey, you're doing great. Thank you. All right. All right thanks, Nim.